This video is reviewing the anatomy of the knee. Starting with the anterior side, we have the patella, which we can also say here. This is a sesamoid bone, and its purpose is to increase the efficiency of the quadricep group. So looking at the anterior si side, we determine which side is lateral based on the fibula. So here we have our lateral femoral condyle. And then we also have the medial femoral condyle. Above the condyles on either side, we have the femoral epicondyles. And again, we have a medial and a lateral. When we look at the tibia, we call the top surfaces of the tibia where they articulate with the femur, the plateaus. So we have a medial tibial plateau as well as a lateral tibial plateau. The articulation between the femur and the tibia is our true knee joint. Um, we also call that the tibiofemoral joint. And we also have two other joints in the knee. Between the patella and the femur, we have our patellofemoral joint. And then between our tibia and our fibula, we have our tibiofibular joints. We have one at the proximal end and one at the distal end. So this would be our proximal tibiofibular joint. The processes on the front of the tibia include our tibial tuberosity, which is where our hamstring group attaches. You can also see it here. On the medial side, this area is called our pes anserine tubercle. And the lateral side is called Gerdes tubercle. So here we can see our pes anserine tubercle, and here we can see Gerdes tubercle. The area underneath the patella on the, fem on the femur is called our patellar groove. And that's where the patella can glide along the femur. Our patella moves um, superior and inferior with flexion and extension of the knee, and it can move about seven centimeters. Looking at the posterior side, we can still see our uh, medial femoral condyle. As well as our lateral femoral condyle. And then we can see the epicondyles. Both medial and lateral. Looking at the posterior side of the femur, the area between the condyles is called the intercondylar groove. We can still see our medial and, and lateral tibial plateau. As well as our proximal tibiofibular joint. Keeping in mind that this articulation between the tibia and the femur is our tibiofemoral joint. The musculature of the knee is closely correlated with that of the hip. On the anterior side, we have our um, quadricep group. Which is made up of the um, three vastus muscles. So we have our vastus medialis. our vastus lateralis, and then beneath their rectus femoris, we would have our vastus intermedius. So in the middle, we have our rectus femoris. And those four muscles converge into the quadricep tendon above the patella. And after we cross the patella, it becomes the patellar tendon. We also see the sartorius muscle on the anterior side. We can also, from the anterior side, see some of the muscles on the posterior side, including the gastrocnemius. On the posterior side, we have our hamstring group again, like we saw with the hip. 
So we have our two semi-muscles on the medial side, our semi-membranosus and our semi-tendinosus. Our semi-membranosus is medial to the semi-tendinosus. Inferior to the knee, we have the two heads of our gastrocnemius. We divide these into a medial head and a lateral head. And deep to our gastrocnemius, we have our plantaris. The deeper view of the posterior side, again, will include the plantaris, as well as the popliteus, and our soleus. We can also follow the tendons down from the hamstring group. On the lateral side, we have our biceps femoris. We have our long head and our short head, with the long head being on top and our short head being underneath. And then we have our semi-tendinosus and our semi-membranosus. Semi-membranosus is deep and medial, while our semi-tendinosus is more superficial and lateral.